Let me um, now give the floor to our first welcome uh, speech, and uh, it's going to be held by Professor Miklos Réthei. Uh, he's the chair for the Hungarian, uh, the National uh, uh, Commission for UNESCO, and he's a pro professor emeritus at Semmelweis Medical University, and uh, let me give the floor to you. Mr. Gallant Chair, Mayor of uh, West Frame, the ladies and gentlemen, before I start my welcome speech, I would like to call your attention to a recent press release saying that the World Heritage Committee of UNESCO decided to inscribe the historic center of Odessa, Ukraine, on the World Heritage List. And I quote from here, Odessa, a free city, a world city, a legendary port that has left its mark on cinema, literature, and the arts, Odessa is thus placed under the reinforced protection of the international community. While the war continues, this inscription embodies our collective determination to ensure that this city, which has always surmounted global upheavals, is preserved from further destruction, unquote, announced Audrey Azule, UNESCO Director General. The historic center of Odessa was placed immediately as world heritage in danger. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to welcome you on the first day of the fifth most conference in 2023 entitled Resilience in the Age of Uncertainty. It's also a great pleasure for me to do this in this beautiful historic town, West Brim, in the cultural capital of Europe in 2023. The title of a conference explains and emphasizes its substance and objectives. I'm asking myself whether the emphasis on, emphasis on the word resilience expresses the most important virtue to react on the events of the age of uncertainty. The word resilience has several synonyms, like flexibility, elasticity, endurance, toughness, or bounce, bouncing back. These words mean that after the cessation of, the, of some force, objects or living creatures are able to return to the original condition. To cope with the problems of an uncertain world, we need more not to return to the point of origin, but to step forward. The term age of uncertainty was coined by John Kenneth Galbraith for a TV series in 1973 at the request of a BBC reporter. This year, we may remember the author, John Kenneth Galbraith, at the 50th anniversary of the notion Age of Uncertainty. Forty years after its birth, in the autumn of 2013, Ferenc Mislivets, the chairman of the one-time Social Sciences Committee of the Hungarian National Committee of UNESCO, organized a conference in Budapest entitled Landscape of Crisis, a New Age of Uncertainty. I was invited to welcome uh, the conference <clears throat> as the president of the Hungarian National Committee of UNESCO as the present position. In my talk, I compared security and uncertainty. It was stated that we needed a strategy to live in the future that mixes security and uncertainty. The strategy must be based on education, knowledge, culture, and information, which, is, which are the four pillars of UNESCO. After the leading roles of education and knowledge, it was emphasized that culture that includes both education and knowledge helps us not to feel alone. 
in a world of transform, full of transformations, therefore unrecognizable and constantly changing. At the end of the talk, it was asked whether for people of adequate competencies and trust, a predictable, always certain world would be the proper age for living. To be sure, <clears throat> every person's life is finite. One day we will die. But until that moment, let's uh, consider the events of the uncertain world as the never fading source or sources for correction in our life. To be ready to, the, to do the corrections, resilience could be replaced perhaps by adaptability. The subtitle of the conference, Building Peace Through Culture and Education, cuts into the focus of the today's social and political situation. The creation of UNESCO in 1946, following the horrible destructions of the Second World War, was aimed to establish and strengthen peace in the world. The first sentence of the UNESCO's charter reads, since wars <coughs> arise in the consciousness of the people, it is necessary to work on the consciousness of the people to defend peace. To defend peace, the world needs peace, peacemakers. Pope Francis put the question of, this, of his reflection on November 1st, 2022, how can one be a peacemaker? We all crave for peace, but often it means to live in calm conditions, in quietness, left undisturbed by others in peace. In contrast, there are people who not only want to live in peace, but who are ready to build peace. They are the peace-building agents. At the foundation of peace, one finds commitment, cooperation, and patience. Peace will not to fall into our laps from above, Peace sprouts from the soil of life, in friendship, in the family, at the workplace, in a subway wagon full of passengers, and in the soil of this conference too. Its growth is aided by acts of justice and mercy. Peace cannot be achieved by conquests, by defeating people or nations. Pope Francis also gives some advice on how to become peacemakers. First of all, it is necessary to disarm our hearts, remove from all aggressive thoughts, complaints, indifferences turned against each other. Peace building paves the way to peace. We forgive those who have offended or hurt us. We care about those on the margins of society and we try to remedy injustice for those <coughs> who have less. Of course, what people, <coughs> Pope Francis teaches is based on the thoughts of the Bible, in which we also find this phrase, glory in heaven to God and peace on earth to men of goodwill. Among peacemakers, we will surely find those who recognize a causal relationship between the two halves of this teaching. The peace on earth has prerequisite. Man alone is not enough for peace building. Returning to what is enshrined in the UNESCO's charter, a quote again, a peace that is based solely on the political and economic agreements of governments cannot bring about the unanimous, lasting, and sincere cooperation of peoples of the world. So peace, based on lasting foundations, must be based on the spiritual and moral compassion of humanity." Unquote. I hope you have noticed the cross-talk between the teaching of Pope Francis and the aims of the Founding Fathers of UNESCO. This conference has a subtitle that plans to build peace in the realms of education and culture. I am convinced 
that spiritual and moral solidarity emerges from these two. Thank you very much for your attention.